Well, welcome everybody to another lecture night. I'd like to introduce Renaud. I, I met him first at uh, one of the Dorkbot, pre Dorkbot presentations, which I've spoken to you about before. Um, he's going to present to us on hydrogen oxygen creation and the uses thereof for welding, cutting, and you'll talk about vehicles as well, I'm sure. Um, Matt, have you got your safety equipment? Yes, I've got the safety equipment. So Good. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> For those not in the know, you'll have to check the email about... Uh, and I've got my swimmers on. <laughs> so, right, take it away. You. Thank you. So, my name is Ronald Kaprinsky. i um, 40 years old already. Um, I've been a sound engineer and a music, music producer for a long time. Uh, now I'm very interested in uh, researching and developing some um, new, what they call new uh, uh, forms of fuel and all this. They're not new, they're, they're very old. They, this, this is an electrolysis. This has been invented in, uh, just after the Middle Age uh, in, in uh, very rudimentary forms. Uh, it's been through the, um, <clears throat> the uh, before the uh, um, revolution, the uh, industrial revolution, and uh, uh, hydrogen was supposed to be our fuel today. But um, it's the big companies apparently uh, decided that uh, petrol was was uh, more likely to be uh, the one to, to be used. Uh, so I've researched into this because. Um, well, the, the, the price of fuel is uh, expensive, that's one thing, and it's, it's um, the, the pollution, pollution problems. Uh, this, this is completely clean, uh, it's the gas that is the most abundant in the universe. Uh, it's got properties that are way beyond uh, any other uh, gaseous fuels. Um, so this is a unit I made myself uh, with a very small budget. Uh, I made, it took me about six months research and development. Uh, I have a few friends uh, across the world, uh, some in Canada, in the United States, uh, etc. in France as well, uh, who are developing similar machines. Uh, we all have our uh, respective designs. Uh, this is mine. Um, so uh, the goal with with this particular machine, because this. With hydrogen, hydrogen gas, there are millions of applications. Uh, this is just one of them uh, that I decided to develop because um, it's, it's an easy one for me to uh, make a product and possibly make one day sell, sell and, you know, and have a company or something and, and sell, sell a product. So uh, this one is actually made for, um, <clears throat> it's a torch, so this uh, is a, a real-time electrolysis, uh, it's fairly efficient, this one for a dry cell, as I, tell, I told someone here before, uh, most electro electrolysis are uh, emerged, the, all the plates are emerged, this one is uh, specific, this, the, the edges of the plates are not emerged in the liquid, uh, this allows higher efficiency because there are no current li liquid, uh, current leakage between the edges. Okay, so um, yeah, so this one uh, delivers gas uh, as much. This this is designed to size uh, 10 amp uh, 10 amp power plug on a, a household uh, power grid. Uh, I, I could make one for the 20 amps. I will in the next uh, my next unit. Um, so this one, with this one, uh, you can deliver 12 liters per minute of hydrogen gas. I should um, um, do, uh, say a little precision, uh, it is not exactly hydrogen gas. This is a much more powerful form of hydrogen. Hydrogen normally is a H2, you know, in the form of H2, that, that is um, usually when you buy a tank of hydrogen, it's H2. Uh, this is uh, not just H2, this is, okay, so this is a mix, so what, what comes out of this, so do I have to remind what uh, water electrolysis, electrolysis is, well. okay, water electrolysis is uh, water and power equals H and O, because uh, uh, water is H2O, right? Mm -hmm. 
So there is one molecule of, of uh, oxygen, two molecules of uh, atoms of uh, hydrogen, sorry. So uh, when you um, create uh, electrolysis and the gases are uh, single ducted under a specific voltage, you get, you get this um, form of hydrogen called Brown's gas. Brown's gas has been in invented or discovered um, in the 1960s by Mr. Yul Brown in Auburn, he's an, Aust an Australian man. Uh, so this gas is a, a can actually burn at really, really, really high temperatures, uh, up to 5,000 degrees, which is the temperature of uh, nuclear fusion on the sun. Yes? Uh, what makes up Brown's gas? What makes up, okay, so what makes up Brown's gas is a compound of different forms of hydrogen and oxygen inside the mix that comes here, okay? So it's, there are some uh, uh, molecules of H2, O2, uh, mono, um, so diatomic, monoatomic as well, uh, uh, H1, uh, O1, and as well as free radicals. Free radicals, it's uh, um, atoms with uh, one less electron and things like this. Okay, uh, so they are, all have a different um, uh, way they, they react together, makes it very, very, very hot. Okay, thing with the and um, well, I'll show you one because I can't, I can't uh, light it up here. So maybe I can do um, any questions before I fire it up. What power supply are you using? How many okay, volts uh, and amps? And okay, so this, as I said, this is a, a to max out um, 10 amp power plug. So this is a 3000 watt power supply. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm not going to light it up, just to, just to do, uh, do a quick rundown. So turn on the power supply like this. And I have a little knob here that is actually it's a pulse width modulating. Um, this is <coughs> so this is the power box and this is the power controller. And this is a, called a pulse width modulating system. It pulses the um, the current, uh, and you can control the amount of amps by the uh, the uh, uh, the spacing between the pulses. Okay. So at this stage, the pulses are really far apart, so there is no power, uh, there is no power, no gas. So if I, I dial a bit of gas, so we got gas coming out here. Cold fusion. No, it's not cold fusion. There's <laughs> <laughs> something else. So I have the gas coming out here. Yeah. <laughs> And it's uh, so the beauty of it, if you're working in a workshop, for example, you can let it run as long as you want without uh, burning the gas because it's, it's um, well, you don't want it uh, to fill the, the, the room of. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the hint of it? You know, it, it doesn't smell and it's completely harmless. <coughs> it's completely harmless. And yes, this, this, this sound is typically the sound of propagation of, of an explosion of hydrogen. It's a pop. It's not a wham or kaboom. <laughs> it goes really, it really goes pop. Because, yeah, because this gas uh, is, is a gas that, is, um, that burns very, very fast, the fastest in the universe. And it's regarding the, the flame propagation is, is uh, so fast then, then it's, it's, uh, it explodes and nothing burns around. I have a few explosions in my workshop. And, well, we don't yeah, no, no, there, there won't be any. I, I hope so. <laughs> but if there's an explosion, usually there's a, just a few bits of plastic. So you, know, you, you, you just jump on your chair. And <laughs> okay. So what okay. safety precautions have you got going on? Uh, okay, safety precautions. So it's not sitting at the front, you see. Yeah, for sure. Concerned. So, safety precautions. So, the thing is, with, um, I was expecting this question, but, uh, okay, in here, it's, it's very dangerous, the gas that's coming in there, because there is the oxygen and the hydrogen as well, in the same, in the same uh, holes. So, this is explosive. When, for example, uh, you got uh, oxy acetylene kit, I don't know if anyone's seen that, there's the, the fuel comes in one in one in one tube and the oxygen comes in the other one. So therefore if there can't be any backfire. This thing, the main problem the main problem is backfires. Okay, so that's been my main uh, safety uh, uh, preoccupation when I when I built it. Uh, 
So I <coughs> built, um, so the handle of this is actually a flashback arrester. So it's, uh, it's just uh, some uh, <coughs> steel wool that is packed hard in there and this, this will stop the fire from. If the backfire goes past the first flashback arrester, then I have another one here. Okay. So uh, I never had any <coughs> backfire going all the way to the cell because that would be a total damage and uh, I would lose my equipment. And what is the bubbler for? The bubbler, this, this is only, uh, normally there's a tank on top, as I said before, uh, uh, unfortunately I, I lost my tank, um, it's going to have to replace it. I think there was a leak and a friend of mine, mine was waving the flame uh, too close for me and it didn't go. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So first safety is tell, tell everyone that it's no using, yeah, to tell them, tell them what, what it is. You know? not to wave the flame in, in front of the, the machine. So the, the bubbler, okay, you can use bubblers for different things. Uh, you can use them to clean the gas. Uh, you can use them to um, uh, as an extra safety as well. So this one works as an extra safety. So uh, yeah, so um, see if uh, there's no any further questions, we can... Do um, you need to steal more though? Yes, you can. The best, yeah, the best if, if you have a regular use of it. In here, it's only tap water because I use it very rarely, only for a little demo here, here and there for a friend. Um, t uh, yeah, this water would, is best because this way you keep your, your plates clean longer because there's no uh, deposit of uh, calcium and all that. Yes. I understood you to say that the electrodes aren't actually immersed in the water. The the, uh, the edges are not immersed. The edges are not yeah. immersed. Okay. If you can see there's uh, the gaskets and you can have a look. Mm. Uh, the, the edges are, are uh, <coughs> toward the outside. Why well, is okay. it a problem to keep the edges away? It's current leakage. You get current leakage in uh, around the edges and then you, you make heat and uh, you lose efficiency. So you make less gas for more power and you don't want this. What sort of maintenance does a unit require? Does it, um, if, if we did have distilled water... Okay, okay. So um, maintenance, if you use it every day, if you're a tradesman and you use it every day, uh, there is like every couple of months you want to do a, a perform a clean on it. So to clean it, you, you drain the whole liquid and then you mix with uh, acid, some water in there and you do a run. With, uh, with the acid and then uh, reverse the polarity and this cleans the plates. Because oh, right. yeah. uh, in, in there it's uh, alkaline, <coughs> alkaline mix, so uh, it reverses the... Uh, the, the uh, but the plates, they, they will not last forever because they will, they will corrode after a point because they are, they are marine grade stainless steel 316. After a point, they, they, they will go. The best is to use nick nickel or titanium. That's the best, but it's it's more expensive to uh, to, to build one out of titanium. Okay. However, you know you can get uh, your your plates uh, if you use this for like six years, six years, uh, like three four hours a day. After six years, yeah, you want to change your plates. A set of plates is about three four hundred dollars. So you know okay. that's that's all right mm. because uh, of titanium that's it's like two thousand mm. dollars worth of plates. Wow. But you keep them forever. That's, yeah. that's the beauty of it. So yes, and this gas, yeah, as I said, there's uh, no no toxic no toxic exhaust, no toxic fumes, and if you're working on a daily basis, on um, if you're a plumber or you mm. know or cutting steel or you don't you know, and you have to work for twenty <coughs> years with you, with your gas under your nose, and this this will not harm you at all, you know, because the exhaust is only water vapor. Are you able to throttle the temperature back? To are you able to control, control the temperature, temperature to a, to yeah, with a lower the, temperature? Well, with the output, with, the, the, um, with this knob, you, you control the amount of gas you, you, you are having. And the more so gas, the, really the more gas, the more heat. Logical. And as well, I uh, will show you outside, uh, the, uh, the gas um, is, has um, different temperatures with different materials. For example, I'll just show you one. I'm not going to burn anything. So you see, 
Well, this is still a small plane. We have to wait because there's there's some air in there. So I can I can go with my hand in front of it, and I'm not going to burn myself. Okay. This this goes to five thousand degrees. I will I will demonstrate this. Yeah. Okay, you see, there's a problem with my ball valve. Okay, so um, let's get outside. Do you add anything to the water to improve its conductivity? Yes, there is um, an alkaline salt in there, and uh, it's um, it's uh, caustic caustic soda. I'm using. <coughs> Can you talk a little bit about what you can weld and cut and cannot weld and cut? So what I can weld and cut, I can weld any non-ferrous metals and um, <clears throat> minerals as well, such as quartz. Um, can, you can melt a brick with that. Um, you can melt concrete. Uh, it's really good for jewelry, for example, because uh, you, can, you can experiment with glass. With glass, it's really, really good results. For example, uh, jewelers that use um, that that makes the glass beads, they get very, very nice, clean results with, with this, this stuff. This this technology has been um, <coughs> developed uh, well in in the 1960s by Yul Brown. The problem is that uh, for all his life, he has been um, trying to get patents and authorizations to uh, develop his products in the Western world and never been able to. So uh, he, he had some uh, contact with the Chinese and, and um, Koreans and now this, this technology is widely spread around Korea and China since about 20 years. Hmm. And you can look on the internet, there's uh, uh, machines, uh, industrial grade machines that delivers delivers uh, Brown's gas um, uh, on a, you know, uh, as, at a, with a three phase, um, you know, they, they properly, they, they cost a lot of money, but they, uh, they, they, they've been developing this for 20 years. Yeah. So you are producing more power than you are sucking Yes, I, I, my, mine is actually more powerful than, than the one, that, more efficient than the one that's No, what selling. I mean is if you take 10 amps from the power point, yes. you're actually producing a lot more heat a lot more gas, yes. So why don't we use that as a heater? You can. But as I said, there are millions, millions okay. of possibilities, you know, as, as you can... But would yeah. it be very efficient? Yes, yes. With uh, There's a company in Canada that is called HHO, HHU. So if, if you want the addresses or something, I can write down a piece of paper. They heat a um, four-bedroom house with 800 watts. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. The whole house is heated, and it's uh, the unit looks like a computer box, and there's air going through, and there's a really efficient heat heat exchanger in there, and uh, I think it uses minerals or ceramics, and um, and uh, yeah, it's it's great. I mean, in Canada, they have very very low temperatures, and uh, yeah, it works. So, do you know uh, if anyone's developing a Brown's gas car? I'm sorry? Do you know if anyone's developing a Brown's gas car? Okay, a Brown's gas car. Okay. Uh, there's a few myths and misconceptions about this. Uh, I have to make this clear. There are apparently some people that has made a car work on water. Uh, personally, I've never seen it work. Uh, but, I'm, you know, I keep an open mind. I say, why not? But as long as I, I haven't seen it work, I can't really say that this works. But um, my car, for example, uses Brown's gas as an additive. Okay, yeah. it's a, it's a it's a system just like this one, a bit smaller because uh, I don't need much. I don't need 12 liters per minute for my car. I need only one liter per minute. And this allows me to save 20 percent of my uh, of my fuel expenses and as well cleans my exhaust and gets 80% less uh, um, CO and CO2 out of my exhaust. If, if every Australian would have a system like this on his car, uh, so it's, they call HHO or Brown's gas, it's the same thing. They would be uh, one, you know that one third of the um, pollution of a green, uh, greenhouse gas is transport, right? Well, if all transports were using a system to cut down their emissions, then there would be one third left, uh, one third gone overnight. 
that's a big thing. I got I know some people in um, in uh, Adelaide who are trying to discuss with the government, mm -hmm. but they don't uh, really pick it up. I don't know. They came to their workshop and looked around, asked them if they wanted some money, but they didn't really uh, they didn't really uh, really get it. So. If, if one of you can have a good idea to, to uh, make the government interested in this, well, I'm saying go for it. This, all the community wants this, you know, because we don't want pollution. We don't want the uh, atmosphere to, uh, to get hotter. How come the things. car manufacturers haven't picked it up? There's a few car manufacturers. There's actually one car manufacturer that, that builds cars with a HHO system uh, built in. It's called the Scorpion. It's um, it's a very um, expensive car. It costs like six hundred thousand dollars, and it's like um, it's a bit like a, a Maserati or something. And it, okay. it does a very very low consumption. It's amazing. It does like I don't know, uh, 50, 50 miles per gallon for a huge engine. It's it's, uh, it's yeah. Look it up. The Scorpion. Maybe there's another one now, but it's. You know, it's the, this is why I don't want to make my business with um, uh, fuel and cars. This is something I just do for my friends and my family, or friends of friends. If they're really keen to do it, then I'll sell them a system. But I don't want to go and uh, advertise for because um, it's a very touchy, touchy business, and I don't want to. Uh, yeah, the, the petrol companies wouldn't like you at all. That's that's it, and not just the petrol companies. Yeah. The people, people yeah. are very biased, and uh, they they just they just don't like it. You don't make friends. Yeah. So this is why I came with a, a welding machine, uh, the, uh, the tradesmen. <coughs> they like to have something that is portable. And they don't have to buy gas because with this you don't need to buy gas. It's it, you make it. Mm. All you need is a power plug and some water in there. So when it's you know, if, if you're a plumbing company and you, uh, you, you will save 90% per annum of your gas budget, 10% will be only uh, possibly, you know, um, maintenance over that and that's it. And when you're carrying as well, this, this <coughs> big, big safety thing that if you're carrying this system in your youth rather than carrying uh, bottles, imagine you got this, I've seen so many times, um, tradesmen with these massive bottles of high oxygen sticking out of their ute at like <laughs> the, that <laughs> higher from the cab. And imagine something from a truck would swing <clears throat> and, and, and smash the top of the bottle. The bot bottle takes off like a rocket and like kill three <clears throat> people in, <clears throat> in, in, in the traffic, you know. There are many accidents happening with the fact that people carry uh, gas bottles. And this is this is the response to it, you know. You're not carrying any gas. You can't have any leaks. You know how many how many vans have uh, banged because there was a leak in a acetylene mm. bottle inside and or LPG. Yeah, mm. or LPG as well. So this replaces LPG, <coughs> acetylene, everything. How much electrolyte do you get? Oh, uh, the electrolyte uh, it doesn't normally does not. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit. There's a little bit coming out. So normally with this, it filters it. Look, you very rarely have to uh, refill some electrolyte. If if you're really losing electrolyte, there's a problem. If there's a leak or something. You said you couldn't uh, well ferrous materials. Is that because of the temperature uh, or? It's because of the oxygen. The oxygen that is in, uh, created by this this uh, setup is um, too rich in uh, free radicals, and this is uh, very, has a very high oxidizing uh, power. So the beauty of it is, I'm sorry. What happens to the ferrous metal then? Does it burn? Yes. It's it just uh, oxidizes. Like you know when you're cutting, it it turns to um, it turns to crisp. It's brittle. It turns to brittle. I've tried to weld with this, and it looks like like you're fusing. It's fusing perfectly, but then you can crack it like a chip or something. Mm -hmm. Sounds like my shovel. <laughs> yeah. Is it like welding slag? Is it <coughs> no, no, no. There's no, no. This the thing with this. If you're cutting, uh, if you're cutting steel, there is no slag. If you compare to a cut you've done with acetylene, mm -hmm. you will have some some slag and look. It will look a bit messy. Mm -hmm. but with this, it it looks very straight and it's a bit like a laser. Yep. Yep. Sorry, that's what I mean. It's not as fast as a laser, but yeah. still, compared to uh, acetylene, it cuts thirty percent faster. Okay. Yep. 
No, I meant with the ferrous steel, if you try to do a ferrous metal, yeah. it looks bubbly and crisp like slag, does it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. So the, this is, I don't know, this is a thing. Slag is, you know, a, a, a familiar language. It's, uh, you know, it's used by, you know, the, the uh, uh, welders and all this. I'm not a welder, so I'm... In Britain, with due to inclusions. Yeah, maybe what? you can call it. <laughs> yeah, so with this, uh, if, if I have the um, um, cutting tip, with a cutting tip, you know, with extra oxygen, I can cut through four inches of steel. Okay? Four inches. And 30% faster than the than set. Uh, I'm sorry? Test it on? It was the nearest cash machine. It was an idea. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can do this, but uh, I was, I mean, I'm not endorsing. <laughs> <laughs> do what you want. You know? So, from a safety point of view, can you add something to the gas, like natural gas, to make it smell? Um, just from a commercial point of view, it's not yes. Alive. Yes, you can. Uh, okay, so, so there's some uh, kits that are sold to jewelry. They are bubbling the gas in uh, ac um, acetone. Mm -hmm. So this way, it's, uh, it it's smells smell. like acetone. Um, and as well, you can control the f the flame because I think for gold, there's a problem that of uh, oxidizing with gold. So they uh, they bubble the gas in uh, acetone and, and it brings back to uh, something. Uh, Easier to work to work with. So you were saying that you you don't need to add electrolyte to it. Isn't electrolysis breaking down the water? Just the water, consuming yes. the water. Ah, yeah, yeah. The electrolyte. Okay, uh, I misunderstood the, the catalyst. I, I thought you meant the. Can I forgot to ask the question. Yeah, the electrolyte. Yes, the electrolyte. Meaning the water, of course, you need to. Yeah. Okay. So there's a water tank to feed yeah, water into it. But the uh, the uh, the um, the salts. The salts you never need yeah, right. to, to add it because they just stay in there. So if you got less water, then the concentration of it uh, uh, adds. So the um, ratio of uh, expansion of between water and oxygen is one per fi fifteen hundred. So <coughs> one volume of water makes. 1500 volumes of um, hydrogen and oxygen. So it means so you can. If you use it for an hour, do you have to top it up? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. A no. day. Oh, yeah, man, even a few days. Okay. Even a few, depending on the side of your, your container. You know. But uh, for example, in my car, uh, I have to top up every three weeks or something. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it doesn't use much, much, much at all in volume. Have you done a mileage check on your car? Like you have done a speedo and a fuel? Yeah, I've done all the tests um, on on my um, <coughs> on my Toyota before. I, yeah, I used to get a twenty a twenty percent gain, which was it normally was it would run at uh, uh, ten liters per minute. Uh, uh, ten uh, sorry, hundred hundred kilometers, ten liters of, of, of fuel. Ten liters per hundred k. Ten liters per hundred k. Thank you. And uh, I was getting eight, something like this, on on highway, on highway only. Because so you use petrol in the car. I use petrol in the and car. And how do you inject this in? Through the air intake. Oh, just like oh, lick it in. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. Oh. Very simple injection. Is the volume of gas that you inject into the car need to be proportional to the throttle? Yes. Uh, no, not proportional. No, it's a flat rate that we're delivering because uh, these units. Um, it's just the beginning of, of it and started like, I don't know, five years ago or something. I know some people who are researching to, because, um, look, if you want to make uh, it, gas in proportion to the throttle level, then you have to make the system more complex. Uh, you have to have like a little buffer or something that will uh, store gas before and that, that would be much, much more, uh, but they're experimenting this, they're experimenting this. <laughs> You would probably uh, gain gain more 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 mileage out of this. <coughs> and, uh, at this stage, the one I have is only a flat rate, so it's uh, you get your best uh, results at around about two thousand revs, three thousand revs. This is what I'm saying on highway. You get the best best mm. result. And where do you get electricity? Uh, from from the alternator. There's extra amps from the alternator. So one of mine uses about fifteen amps. Fifteen amps to make uh, one liter per minute. Okay. And the, uh, the the alternator is okay with it. There's no problem. Yeah, that's, that's all. Right.
<coughs> some, if you got an old car, the alternator is a bit worn out. Uh, it's best to replace it because uh, 15 amps is it's, it's still uh, still a fair bit. Because you know. turning the engine to power the alternator to generate <coughs> electricity. <laughs> to I know, I know, yeah, yeah, I know. There's, a, there's, again, a, there's so a debate. There's a, there's a very wide debate about this. There's the theory <coughs> and there's there's the reality. Uh, you have to try. You know, try it. You know, and if it doesn't work for you, well, I'm sorry, it didn't work for you. Try again on another car. So in some cars, it doesn't work. I mean, in some cars, because they um, you're fighting the electronics. You know, there's a uh, new cars. They have uh, computers, and they always adjust the, the, the mix level and all this, and it's uh, it's uh, quite um, a bit of a problem. So it's it's better on an old car or diesel. Diesels are, are great. Can, you, can I get a little um, cloth or something? Because I think there's a small leak in there. Yeah, you should pay for the time. Perfect. Spot on. There you go. Yeah, I don't use it uh, very often. And, uh, I don't have a workshop at the moment. I have to tell a friend of mine. How <laughs> 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 you see? If, if you turn the, the ball valve off at the <coughs> hand pad, what, what sort of pressure do you build up in the pipe? There's no pressure on this one. There's a, uh, my my next uh, my next uh, design will um, will work with pressure and a, a, a pressure switch. This the, and that will regulate the, the amount of power, not not directly like this. Uh, it's it's. Um, <clears throat> I think it's because. Okay, because regarding we have a mix of uh, oxygen and hydrogen, you don't really want to uh, uh, compress them because of the diesel effect. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but if the machine's still generating gas, yes. where does the gas go? Oh, the pressure does build up. Okay, this, this one, okay, uh, I had uh, on my tank, I had a, a safety valve on it. Uh, so it'll bubble back out through the water. No, there was, there was just, um, you, you could hear the, the valve uh, going Vending. off. Yeah, venting when it was like at over 15 psi, you, you, you could hear it. But normally, if you're a good operator, you know that you don't want to shut the, the ball valve here. Only acts as a, a f, um, flame stopper. Just as a choke, you know, you, you a flame stopper. I see. Yeah. So you, you can, when you finish working, this is normally this is always an open position. When you finish working, you cut it off and you reopen it. Okay, because like, yeah, there would be the temptation That's to right. close yeah. the valve. Yeah, close the valve. The pressure builds up and, and it just goes to the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Do the pop I don't know what's so. up. Well, on, on my new system, there will be a, um, a, a pressure switch. So the pressure switch will, uh, will adjust all this, plus another uh, mechanical valve, just in case if the pressure switch fails. But what makes the gas come out this way as opposed to pushing the water back that way? Is there a, is there yeah, a water okay, yeah, very, very, good, very good question. I had to tackle this problem as well. Uh, a friend of mine who was uh, who is an um, uh, engineer in fluid mechanics uh, helped me a bit with that. Well, it's all about the size the size of the hoses, and because this one works only with gravity, so usually if there's no uh, restrictions uh, by the size of the hoses or between plates or nothing, normally gravity works its way. So, so the, just the way that the water is pushing the gas out this end. Well, water wants to go down, yeah. and gas wants to go up. So if you're not if you're not uh, putting a barrier in between, it normally it's, it's fine. My first design was with with the tank, and my uh, the, the feed was was too small, and I had problem of water pushing back in. So I had to uh, this this um, a, a, a valve, a, you know, a little tappet valve mm -hmm. in there. And uh, to avoid this, and as well, I had to increase. He told me that I should increase to three quarter inch. Um, with the three quarter inch, the water has got has got enough um, space to uh, to push down, and there's, there's there's no problem at all. Some people would use pumps. Uh, my friend in Canada uses pumps, but I think he's not doing his uh, fluid mechanics right. He should not be using pump because the pump uh, uses uh, power and you need this power to create more gas. Yeah, but a gravity feed tank would, yeah, it would serve work. the purpose perfectly. perfectly well. Yeah, perfectly well. How many sections do you have there in parallel? Sections oh. in parallel? Uh, so <coughs> this, this uh, cell is a dual, no, it's, it's a six, there are six, um, six cells in parallel. Yeah, that's it. With uh, seven seven neutrals neutral plates in, in between. Mm -hmm.
Your power supply, what voltage comes out? Uh, this is a 24 volt. So 24. I, yeah, but I've sized it to 24 because I wanted to be able to use it with uh, uh, truck batteries. Yep. Works good with truck batteries. That's the whole thing. <coughs> you can be a remote area and you, you can be welding for like an hour with, with two 100 amp uh, uh, truck batteries. So I've, I went to uh, 24 volts. Um, maybe I should have gone to 12 volts because it's a bit more common. And uh, yeah, if I have to uh, do one again, I'll size it to 12 volts, or I will use um, 120 volts for uh, if it's a machine that works in a, on the grid, because I just use um, um, a, a voltage, something that halves halves the voltage, and then because uh, I have enough space to, because what you need is to make rounds gas, you need between two volts and three volts in between the plates. Okay. If you're over or under, it's not brown gas. It's ah. something as the quality of the gas is, is totally different. So yeah, it's been observed uh, that um, it's a specific voltage. So you will need a, s a certain amount of plates. So for uh, um, if it's 120 amps, you want around about 60 plates or something like 60 or 50 plates. So that's a pretty big sandwich. So um, if you use 240, then you need 100. And that's, that's a lot of plates and <laughs> a lot, a lot of, of gaskets, <laughs> so probably um, probably but use uh, keeping the voltage low is probably yeah. As, I, I still have to uh, finish to make my mind, uh, but first I, I need um, I need some um, some budget to start. I think I need uh, one of the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm looking for investors at the moment to uh, <laughs> to invest uh, into the new system. It will work with uh, resonance. And uh, should be much more efficient. Um, I still have to choose what kind of power supply I'm going to use, but at the moment it's more. Um, it's I don't want to put the ox before the the carriage. Ox before the cow. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and so I I'm looking for some uh, solid <coughs> solid budget, and then I will start uh, uh, writing and thinking a bit more because these are details. These are things that uh, are not. Um, I, I have the, the so the next design will be uh, looking like uh, just like um, a, a cylinder, stainless steel, <coughs> uh, uh, tin welded uh, cylinder, and everything will be inside. So, thing is with that, uh, I've shown it to a few tradesmen. And, oh, so this, oh, oh, these wires! Oh my God! So they this, and they say it's plastic, so they don't like the plastics. Um, so this this design is good for demos, but it doesn't work for 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 clients. They don't like this. They want something that looks tough. That <coughs> is, uh, looks like a welder. Yeah, that looks like a welder. So my next design will be looking like just a yeah a, a stainless steel a cylinder on on wheels, and that's it. With the holes that comes out, and then yeah. turn it on, and that's it. Make it two cylinders, and then it'll fit in their trolley. <laughs> Make it two cylinders. Yeah, 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 two cylinders. And paint one black and one red. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> fit in the trolley. It, yeah, blue and red. Yeah. red yeah. In, the, in the power in the control box, yeah. you said it was pulse width modulated. You yeah. ain't just a chopper. <clears throat> this okay. This uh, I'm not an electronician, so a friend of mine had to uh, design this for me. Uh, he's using a triple five, um, triple five chip. Five five five. I don't feel really like I don't feel really like this design. Might have an amplifier. Well, it's probably just a fair switch. To be, it's just a chopper. Mm. Well, well you're talking Chinese to me. I'm, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> electronics. This is why I, I let my friend uh, doing dealing with the electronic. I tell him, okay, I need certain amount of power, a pulse between this and that, and he delivers it. Problem with this one. Uh, I have um, fluctuation in the in the voltage, and I don't um, I don't like this. Um, so I have another friend who's it's been a year that he's uh, promising that he will design a new one for me, and he still uh, has, hasn't uh, um, got to it. Mm. So if anyone here wants to do a side project of <laughs> a PWM unit, he's more yeah, than welcome. Yeah. Why don't you like the filtration? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you said you didn't like the filtration. I don't like the fact that the uh, the, the, uh, the voltage fluctuates. Oh, fluctuation. Yeah, okay. fluctuation. Sorry, because um, if this because this one starts when it's low, it starts at 15 volts, and 15 volts means uh, about around about a volt 
in between the uh, the plates, and this is uh, the quality of the gas changes. Mm -hmm. This is why I really need something with with a steady uh, 24 24 volts out. So and how, then, many, then how many cells did you say you're going to have? Six. Six cells. And you want two odd volts per cell. Uh, no, this is uh, each cell works on 24 volts. But in between the cells, they are okay because that's what I said before. The plates, these stacks of plates, are not all powered. Only two are powered. The power plates, and in between, we have six or seven neutral plates. Okay, and in between all the neutral plates, we want two volts, two three volts. And how's that set? This is this is set by the the, the amount of, of of the voltage you have between the power plates. So the more neutral plates you have inside, the more you will divide the the, 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 uh, the voltage. Are they electrically connected to anything? Nope. I mean, okay. not not with wires, but they are with the electrolyte. The electrolyte is. is so the electrolyte yeah. does the balancing. That's it. So if if you are turning, <coughs> if if you're powering it, you can measure with a with a voltmeter on, on both power plates. You get your 24 volts. But if you you can do a measurement in between two two plates that are not connected to the terminals. You will get your two, vo two, three volts. Does is the Brown's gas affected by whether you use stainless steel or anything else? Does that change the quality? You can't use wood, Dom. <laughs> 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 Thank you, <Mark>. <laughs> <laughs> you, you couldn't possibly have a better answer than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the the gas doesn't change with. <coughs> What you are pointing because the gas is generating and what you're what, what you're melting is uh, after you generate the gas. So I'm not sure if I understand. Oh, the, the material that the plates are made of. Yes, I think was. Yeah. 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 Ah, yeah. the material the plates are made. Does of. that affect the gas? Uh, no. The quality no. of the brown's gas. Maybe if you use no. <coughs> something else. It doesn't. But you have different voltages <coughs> for different uh, types of plates. Purely the voltage. Uh, I haven't researched into uh, other types of plates because uh, I, could, I I'm happy with the stainless steel at the moment. But some colleagues of mine are making uh, titanium and with units with titanium, and there's much less plates in there because titanium uh, actually uh, has got different uh, um, different uh, ways it drives current and it's more conductive. And uh, the best would be aluminium, but aluminium the problem is. Uh, because it's cheap and very conductive, and or, or copper as well would be great. But the problem is it, it corrodes with the um, with the, the salts. It gets black straight away. Yeah. Okay. Do you ever put zinc in something to sacrifice instead? Well, there is zinc in these ones because it's uh, it's uh, stainless steel. There's I think there's zinc in there. Uh, zinc and chromium. And I mean, you can just put a block of zinc in electric. Ah, just just zinc. Yeah, why not? It's, it's a good idea. I don't know. I haven't. Um, I haven't thought because stainless steel works works okay for me. So I um, yeah. I could <coughs> look if, if I if I really have to um, to uh, change to switch to another metal, maybe I'll think of zinc and test test this. See how it goes. I think maybe it's just a chill. Just chuck a block of zinc in yeah, instead of change the plate. Yeah, yeah. Because because zinc is uh, is fairly affordable. So yeah, that could be a good alternative. Why not? Yeah, Do you have any method of purging the gas that's in the, the chambers and the pipes? So the gas doesn't need to be purged, but the electrolyte does. Uh, I have a no, well, to transport it safely. Like uh, that that container. Uh, the, the, I don't know. The, the gas uh, just. Uh, nice story. Yeah, the, the gas it doesn't stay in there really. It's um, well, there's a little bit in there, so the good idea is to vent it like this. You you leave it open all the time, so when you finish working, the the rest of gas will will come out. And uh, will will be exchanged and replaced by some air. That's why when I started, it is full of air because uh, the uh, the gas. But yeah, it could be a good idea to just purge purge the uh, the leftover of gas if you really have to to uh, to move it uh, quickly. That's a good but idea. Yeah, if you got a trace on it, it's in the back of the unit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that could be a good idea. Something that, that, that blows some air that. inside to uh, to yeah. uh, to clear it up. Excellent idea. Yeah, that's that's in Africa. Right. <laughs> I've got a suggestion for you. Um, Flame arresters as well. Yeah. Uh, use the the scented flame arresters out of a gas detector. Uh, gas they're, detectors. They're What's like they're they're already approved by the oh authorities. Yeah? Okay. It's a it's a it's a ball system and all it's the balls. It's mechanical, are, is it? Yeah. So it's, it's a metal that tube. That won't work. 
yeah, that won't work. Why because, work? Why? No, because mechanical flashback arresters don't work with hydrogen because of the flame front propagation is so way too high, and the ball doesn't have the time. We, to move. we use um, combustible uh, gas detector heads. Yes. Detecting hydrogen. Ah, the one that detects hydrogen. Yeah, like, yeah. You have a you have two uh, platinum wires that heat up. Okay. And one of them one of them is exposed to the gas. Where where do you find these? They are in in. Oh, in <coughs> gas detectors. Yeah, gas detectors. Yeah, but that gas detectors usually they detect only like LPG or uh, hydrogen. Okay. Um, methane. Uh, okay. LPG. So say, it's, it's it's mechanical or chemical. I'm not sure how, how it works. Maybe you have to write it down and I'll, I'll research well, this. Yeah, it, it, the, the thing is made of tiny balls that are all compressed together. Okay. And the gap between them sets what the how much gas goes through. It is okay. similar to what you've done with oh, the except with balls. The, yeah. the, except that you're talking about micron sized holes. Micron sized holes. You're, you're talking about steel wool. Well, this one, yeah, this one is relatively. Uh, no, that's a rock filter. Low, low cost. <laughs> yeah. But that's a rock filter. Pretty much. And, I, and I'd be surprised if it would really stop the hydrogen flame front from going well, back it through. Does, I've, well, I've done many tests. The, the only problem is that when it gets moist, then, then the flame goes, goes through for some reason. Yeah. But when, it's, uh, when you keep it dry, I've done tests, <coughs> 25 tests in series, um, different days, with different, um, mm. different weather and all this, I've always been a success with. There are two only because of this moisture problem. If there's moisture in this one or in this one, the other one we, we, we catch. When, when you're using the, uh, I, I've done a lot of work with the methane yeah. detectors. Yeah. The, the methane goes inside this, through this filter, yeah. and you can hear it popping inside. When, when you get up to, up, up above your lower explosive limit, you can actually hear the sense of popping inside. Yeah, yeah. So you, yeah, you know there's well, flames in there. Well, there's always, at, at the last, uh, the last, uh, um, safety that there is, is on the tank. There is a, a um, rubber cap, that's your refill cap is, is made of rubber and it's, it's quite, it's quite uh, hard to push in. And if the flashback arresters don't, don't <coughs> stop the flame front, then the, um, the little uh, cap will pop, simply. Like, like a, like I, can just, I can just see you taking this out to test safe. Well, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, this rubber cap's going to pop out as my last line of defence. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll I've see been there and done that. When I get there, okay. But uh, yeah, I, I have. Look at this stage. I'm just uh, trying to make a machine that is uh, uh, the lower, co the lowest cost as possible. And uh, because you know, enthusiasts uh, usually they're not the richest. So I'm trying to make a machine that will cost like three, three, four thousand dollars, and if I spend too much in, um, uh, you know, it, they will be just experimental in the beginning. But that's right. I, I will have to tackle all these uh, safety, uh, safety people that will try to uh, make it, uh, make it more difficult, and this, that's their job, and it's, that's totally fair enough. But I'm, I'm not afraid of, uh, you know, researching. Nowadays there's the internet and uh, people like you that uh, are happy to share their knowledge. So, um, yeah, hopefully I'll get there. Very good. Oh, let's go and fire it up. Yeah, can we burn something? Where did you want it? Hey, baby. Turn off the lights. Happy birthday. Can you get a right mic for And you got the left hand side. Maybe come away from the table. Yeah, perfect. All right. So you just go up on this end, and then when you get the first cap on, on the water too, you go behind that, and you take that one, and punch it. There is another one in there. How do you see how fast that's heated up? Oh man, that's awesome! Yeah. Now let's try this new stone. That's why we were Slag them out, slag them out. Oh, now. Whoa. Oh, look at that. So the it's vaporizing, you see? Yeah, you might catch with the table. <laughs> Look at the wood go. Yeah, yeah, and the, the tile is going to be damaged as well. Has <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> anyone heard of the China Syndrome? That's, that's with, with minerals, they have very little e elasticity, so <laughs> that's what happens. Okay. Yeah, don't need to be that hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I don't know. I found it. The punch is still there.
Yeah, it's on the table though, yeah. so you flick it up on the so plate. So I can right? now, I yeah. think I can try to do this uh, plumbing job. So uh, as everyone knows, I'm a plumber. Through, it? it was good. Yeah. So uh, yeah. 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 it's a sound engineer. Plumber, sound engineer. Same Brain surgeon. <laughs> Is anyone good at brazing here? Oh, it's been a while. Bruce? Bruce? That could do it better than me. Bruce? 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 I think Dom's done the course. Don't get too hot. Dom's done the course. Don't get too hot if you're working your way around. Okay. We'll get too hot there. Look at that, Sandy Color. A little bit on and work it in, move around. You don't want to get too hot. Oh, yeah, true. Not too hot now. It's just brazing. That could work with uh, if I had a yeah, with um, a copper copper wire. I could I could easily yeah. weld this. Yeah, very hot. Very hot for silver brazing. So I can try to cut that bolt now. Bruce, you were supposed to show me. What happened? It went so fast that I didn't have the time. Put the afterburner on. Alright. Yeah, that's some zinc. I'm done for you. Zinc Zinc and uh, steel. You get all those light and bits of magnesium on the back of the school bus. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> chuck it at the girl. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Wait. And uh, yeah, let's let's try with uh, this bit of tungsten again. Here's a concrete drill. Yeah, concrete <laughs> drill. Yeah, sure. Too easy. What's that name? The tungsten carbide still. Oh, yes, that's right. Dom's on. <laughs> no, but it's, it's only the tip that is tungsten carbide. Dom's got those. Right, the whole pl pl no. oh. Far out. Another one? Right. Okay, I, I want to try with this, uh, this, this TIG tip, which is 90% uh, tungsten. Oh, I wouldn't look straight That's 5,000 degrees right here. Perfectly the sun. Temperature of the sun. You can see the white smoke now. <laughs> and you can see the white smoke now. It's like a matter. Okay, and you will see at the end. Okay. Just make it more obvious. And you will see that the end of it is like a little pen. You know, it's like a little pointy now. It means that. The tungsten is gone. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else? Um, glass or? Oh, glass. Okay, glass. So this thing is going to explode. Oh, oh, that's good. Oh, good. Yeah, beauty. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see it. Yeah. Is there a little bit of glass yeah, somewhere? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to try to print no, no, it. No. <laughs> yeah, step back just in case. <laughs> I'm going to stand over here behind everyone else. <laughs> We need the Mythbusters Wexler. <laughs> Put it in the shipping container. <laughs> Don't mind it. I'm Get his ball. We'd actually cut the hole in two, but he's gonna crack the floor. So glass is not it's not too uh, difficult to melt it. You can do this with uh, uh, oxy, LPG, and all that.
Now the ball valve works again. Now the, the tip is clean. All right, anyone, awesome. Anyone wants to try? Um, yeah, so. Um, you can test it. Anything else? Um, <laughs> that's, that's can we do the fire extinguisher? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Your camera. I will say this and it went. <laughs> <laughs> no. Aww. Maybe I could try to. Um, we do one of the tungsten, the tungsten carbide on there because that won't crack. Yeah, oh, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't go on the brick. That's right, let's do the brick. All right, who wants to do the brick? Is there a welder some, someone? To cut the brick. Oh, Someone cut the brick. The like no? no, there's people much older That's than Bruce. Okay. Step right up. The original one. Okay. No, Bruce. not that much older than you, Phil. <laughs> not that much older. Oh, they come on. Laurie <laughs> and Jerry. And yeah, yeah, all right. We'll have all right. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Phil, have you heard of Borrow with Sunnies? Yeah. Do I need the Sunnies? No. Uh, not really. Just don't look at it. Not really. Okay, go for it. Yeah, we What's the goal? To, to heat the surface, yeah, to, to glaze the surface. Oh, oh. Can help before, <coughs> before apple and before right, bird, you know. Yeah. yeah, when it was the radar. Awesome. Yeah, the yeah, was we'll give you a bit more oomph. Yeah. 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 Oh, there is. Yeah, there is. Yeah. It's in the back of the So that's working, is it? Yeah, you, you said you, they turn off mm -hmm. the water for the system because the system's right. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 It's just because they're all It's a river. I was thinking we could fix it for Yeah, exactly. We could fix it right here. Fix the I'll fix the hill. I wonder what size the valve is on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Fix it on Saturday. Bring a new one on Saturday. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, I haven't. I haven't. I need to get a few dollars away. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Because we chatted to him. He was in Wolpin. Yeah, we chatted to him last week. We didn't talk to him. We to talk to him on Sunday or the Friday. It was when they try to keep a few meals. You don't want to melt the nozzle. Because it was there, because we were chatting away. Yeah, okay. oh, I had a good old chat, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's quite warm, isn't it? It's it's quite, quite warm, <laughs> yes. But one of the days in the world. Oh, you actually know. So is that sublimating the grand Oh, it is too. Oh, okay. Yeah. 14. Oh, that's all right. What's it a semester? Sublimating. Always say that. Yeah, this white smoke is. Yeah, you don't want to do it. Yeah, well, I just said my duty is incredible. Yeah, well, I can also assure you that the most successful engine aircraft, as the manual says, the second engine just takes you in the same way. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> 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 Mate, that's <laughs> pumping on out, isn't it? It's doing a job of it, isn't it? Yeah. Just down like a nice reserve on nice reserve to burn. That's being converted. Right. I wouldn't have expected that to wash it out. You know, to have really dull down. Yeah, this is wow. awesome. so plenty of water. Uh, it's a bit of water. Dropping rapidly. I bet. Yeah, yeah and this is only 60 amps, so if we can get double, double that. <laughs> Yeah. 
hanging in place for all of it. So is that just disappearing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we could talk about it. You could say, well, yeah, it's just confusing, you know. That's true. That was it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's gone inside the brick now. Yeah, Bruce is doing a great job. But, uh, yeah, where did you get those tips? Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. You could always get the brick put on a chain dog. Some, <laughs> <it around. laughs> <laughs> Some bling. Wow. <clears throat> nice one. It's going to take a while to build that house, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's going to bring it down. Oh. You're looking straight at me. I'm not looking at him. Yeah, that's bloody that's bright. That's the camera. Win. Mm -hmm. No, well, that's why I'm hiding behind the lights. Yeah, I'm not I'm hiding behind the lights. I'm sorry to let that down. Just sacrifice your bad eye, Bruce. Mm. What do you do? Drill a hole through the brick. Pretty well. Slag it. Excellent. I like the glazed brick. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's because of the sand in it. Yeah, you can glaze brick. You can use it for food purposes as well. Uh, I, I wanted to uh, to make mi mini units to sell to Japanese, um, you know, sushi. They like to glaze their sushi. <laughs> and the thing is, it is with LPG, and I don't like it. It tastes like it tastes bad, you know. Mm. And with this, I've tried creme brulee, make oh. creme brulee with it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Perfect, perfect, you know, uh, perfectly uh, neutral, <laughs> you don't taste the gas. But you can peel veggies as well. Um, uh, yeah, I've peeled the capsicum Tomatoes. with this. All the, the skin was gone. <laughs> so, you know, instead of, you know, you know the recipe, you have to peel the capsicum. You know, if you've got a... a yeah. <laughs>